Well, it is Tuesday afternoon. I am just out of the hospital. I had to go in for a <clears throat> catheterization. I have one of my valves in my heart ballooned open so I could, uh, I guess, smoke more cigars. Ha <laughs> ha. So uh, I have got today, because I wasn't so crazy about the uh, other Camacho I smoked from Nicaragua, I got this Camacho, which is a Connecticut shade. Now, I don't know if this is made in Honduras or if it's made in uh, the Dominican Republic. I'll have to look that up. Maybe if you already know, go ahead and tell me. So this is the Camacho in Connecticut. And before I lit it up, I, I did a dry, uh, you know, palate uh, taste test. And what I found is it was kind of woody. You know, it was an easy draw on the cold draw. And I have gone ahead and toasted this up. Now we'll fire it up. Mmm. Very easy draw. I've got a, uh, a bandage down here on my groin area where they went in through the femoral artery to go up into my heart. Anyway, I got a clean bill of health now that that, and I didn't have to have a stent put in, and I don't have to have a fibrillator. So uh, in my book, I mean cigars. No alcohol today, though. They told me no alcohol for 24 hours. All right. Um, the wrapper tore when I cut it, as you can tell right around here. Uh, it's a very, very, how should I say this, thin, papery wrapper. You know, a lot of people will tell you that the wrapper leaf imparts 80% of the flavor, 90% of the flavor on a cigar, and I find that to be bullshit. Basically, I think it's more about the blend and how much Corojo and how much Ligero and how much other filler tobacco and the type of binder you use more so than the wrapper leaf. I mean, one piece of tobacco is not going to impart that much flavor, especially when it's that paper thin. That's my opinion. You tell me what you think. All right, let's smoke this and see what we have. Wow, through the retro hill, got a little cashew nut, or well, let's just call it nuttiness. Oaky, cedary, and nutty. I'm not going to say creamy because that uh, oaky and cedar are really coming through on the finish here. It's still there. What am I drinking? I'm being healthy. 100% cranberry juice. Oh, whoopee, no vodka. I was told to take tomorrow off, not to exert myself, so I've got some cigars I'm going to be smoking. I may go into work with the, uh, with the wife and uh, just have her drop me at the cigar lounge. I'm sure I can get a couple of sympathy cigars out of some folks. <laughs> All right, I do get the nuttiness through the retrohale. I do get the cedar and the oak on the palate finish. Um, I like this one a lot more than I did the Nicaraguan, and I'm, I'm shocked to say that because I'm a Nicaraguan cigar smoker. I like the heaviness of it. But this has got some flavors that are unique. You don't find a cigar with that much oak on it. Cedar, yes. Oak, no. And it's very pleasant. Burn. Razor sharp. No issues so far. We're just a tiny way in to this cigar. We're already at the four minute mark. Let's smoke a little bit more before I call this video. Nutty, oaky, woody. Yep. Those are the predominant flavors. Um... I'm going to get some more Camachos. I'm going to get some of the other ones. Uh, they have a Corojo. They have uh, oh some other cigars that I'm going to try that are made by Camacho. Camacho, once again, is a Davidoff company. And here's the thing. Hector, Hector Macho Camacho, it wasn't Hector, but Mr. Camacho left Cuba in the early 60s 
and uh, went to Honduras, where he found a strip of land that was very similar to what he was used to in Cuba, and uh, started growing tobacco. And that's where the Camacho brand comes from. All right, that's going to do it. We're at the five-minute mark. If you've had the cigar, tell me. I will tell you this. On a scale of five, one being bad and five being really, really good, this is about a 4.5. It's a good cigar. I would buy it again. And that being said, Curry and good day.